guy here in RC in motion. And what I have here is, yes sir, an upside down Traxxas E Revo. Now this E Revo has a few perks here and there that I've uh, I've switched around to convert it into a Truggy. And I run it in the Truggy class at my local uh, RC track. And um, did a couple mods here and there. But um, today I'll be giving you guys a quick tutorial on how to dye RC parts. I mean there's a lot of videos out there but I'll show you correct way, proper way, techniques and what to look for. So once I'm done taking this chassis apart I'll be back with you guys and I'll show you guys what is the process of dyeing that gray area that you see there. So as you guys can see, the motor is already out with the entire transmission. I'm uh, halfway done on uh, taking the chassis off. A um, little quick uh, tip is the receiver box. That over there you have to take it off that servo tape or whatever double sided tape it has because if you can see all the wires and connectors go right underneath uh, that little port there and the uh, receiver is actually in the way so take off the receiver that way you can remove the uh, the wires another tip is when you take off the uh, front uh, axle you want to take off the shocks as well because the shocks are go straight to the bottom of the chassis and they're, it's what connects the bottom part of the chassis. Taking apart a vehicle this big with so many moving components, what you want to do is you want to take the parts, take them apart, and then what I do is I leave the screw or the bolts right with that part. That way I don't lose it and uh, they're stuck in, I mean this car has so many uh, bolts and screws. So what I do, I just leave them and I, uh, and what I do is I, uh, I just pretty much leave it with the part and when I clean it, I take the screws out and I clean the part and then put the screws back together. Same as for the receiver, the shocks, everything, even the battery uh, tray doors. And when you work, you want to do it in an order fashion. You want to start from front to back. Don't jump around because then you'll get confused. Every single part. I'll teach you guys a little tip on taking out the chassis. Yeah, the diffs are all nasty. I race. I know. I'm sorry. But this is what I do every time I come back from a race. Take it apart. Clean it. Ready for the next. Second, I wanted to show you guys the uh, the top part. When you remove this uh, this this chassis, what you want to do is these rockers that go on top. You want to remove the rockers. I had a kind of a problem when I had the rocker there. Uh, the chassis didn't want to go out. So you want to go ahead and remove the rockers. That way you can slip the chassis right out. And like I said, just lift it up and slide. It slides out perfect. I think it's time to dye the E-Revo chassis. Okay, so for this um, dyeing uh, of the uh, E-Revo chassis, what you want to find is a pan or a pot, whatever you want to use. And you want to make sure that, I mean, if you have a, uh, if you have a, a ruler, or, uh, or measuring tape with you at the time. You want to measure your chassis from front to back and you want to find a pan that the chassis could fit perfectly uh, laying down uh, inside uh, the pan. And of course all these other parts will fit in because they're small. Tongs, uh, dye tint, black. You also want to use some latex, any type of latex gloves you can find because that tint is like I mean it won't come off of your fingers for a while so you want to go and you want to toss those in and use that so what we'll do we'll boil the water 
15 minutes and then um, toss this in. Okay guys, so here we have it. Um, it's uh, actually boiling on the old gas burner. Um, we have it boiling for 15 minutes. Okay, so here we have it guys. Um, what you want to do when you're um, dyeing the parts, these smaller parts, you want to put them in a general area. I put them all in this corner so that way I know when I grab one, it's always going to be there. So this is what it looks so far. It's actually getting dyed in. And what I'm doing, I'm flipping it every minute or two minutes. That way it doesn't belt, uh, melt or, uh, or warp. And that way both sides get coated uh, evenly. So, so far this is... Uh, this is what it's looking like. Let me try and get a shot here without all this steam. But as you can see, uh, I had to fill this pan all the way to the top. And even though that I filled it all the way to the top, um, the uh, the top of the chassis is still uh, still uncovered. So what I have to do is flip it every two minutes, so that way this part of the chassis gets uh, gets dyed. So let me show you here. I can pick here in this corner. This general area and I'm always gonna pick up uh, this is kind of tough I'm always gonna pick up a part you see so I put them all in this general area right here this corner uh, so that way they, I know where they're at so I can flip those as well uh, these little parts you don't want to leave them too long uh, they'll get dyed pretty good but they can warp as well and that my friend is how you dye an Erivo chassis black Quick tip, like I said, make sure, here are the, all the rockers. Make sure that um, that the water is, it comes complete, to a complete boil, and then dip uh, all your parts in. These rockers, I left them a little longer. I didn't flip them because it's just one piece. They completely surrounded by water and dye. And um, you wanna flip it every two to three minutes. That way it doesn't warp on you. As you can see, it hasn't warped at all because it still has the natural curve right here and in the back as well. So, that's uh, my tip for today and a tutorial on how to dye an Erivo chassis black.